Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Off to Bottom. coming with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Sideshow Collectibles 1-6 scale Imperial TIE Fighter Pilot from Star Wars. As you can see from the package, this is specifically the Sideshow exclusive version. But I'll get into that here in a little bit. For the packaging though, you can see a real cool image of the TIE Fighter Pilot right there in the front. As well as the logo, come around here to the side, you got another image, you got D Disney down there obviously. Uh, another image of the Pilot right there, come around in the back and you got another image. Then it opens here just on the side, you got some little magnets right in there which are really nice, it just clasps uh, that close. And then you got Star Wars Imperial TIE Fighter, and then you got a really nice open window package that fully showcases the figure within. Really a very, very simple package but still really really very nice. The TIE Fighter Pilot really is one of the fan favorites out there and I know a lot of people that are really looking forward to seeing this guy. So without further ado, let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is. Alright guys, so here we have the TIE Fighter Pilot opened up and out of its packaging. And right up front, he doesn't come with a lot. What you see is basically it. But short of giving him an actual TIE Fighter, there's really not much else that you could give this guy. Now, in addition to the two close fists that he has, he comes with both a right and left uh, relaxed hand, but you can see that this one has the fingers actually a little bit closer together on this than on this. So it, it isn't just a uh, direct copy of each other. Uh, you can even see that on the, uh, the wrist guard section that it is actually molded differently and really very nice detail. I love the wrinkles on there. Really very nice. And then you get a right trigger finger and then a left kind of support hand so you're going to have him holding his gun with this hand shooting and then this one kind of just supporting it but again real great detail on here you can see some nice wrinkles and folds very very simple so you only do get a total of six hands you do get all the pegs they are attached they're on the inside here uh, they're a little bit harder to see you, you can kind of make it out right inside there uh, but they do have all the wrist pegs, so you do have that as, I guess, an accessory. Uh, you also do get this uh, rifle, which actually is a rifle. I mean, you can see in this configuration, it very much looks like it's just, the, you know, a handgun. But you can actually take this. This section here will then, well, you detach this, rotate this back and around. That kind of locks right up there, kind of wedging that up along there, just like so. And then this section here swivels down and you kind of tuck this in and now you have it as a rifle which is really cool and again real nice detail on here but not overdone it's simple which because these movies are from the 1970s I mean the whole idea of simple really does work this nicely captures how a rifle would look in that specific film so really very very impressive now as I mentioned uh, this is the Sideshow exclusive version, so you get this really cool retro blaster. I guess I could have stayed zoomed in, uh, but really great detail on here. But again, very, very simple, and you can see just how very minimalistic the props were way back in the day when the first the trilogy came out. I mean, very, very simple. This is called the Retro Blaster. Like I said, if you get this directly through Sideshow, this is the piece that you will get with it as an exclusive. So really very nice that they include something like it. Uh, unfortunately, the problem that I have with this is that this whole section right here, I'm going to fold this all up get this up like that and then rotate this back around this actually fits very nicely in his uh, holster right here now in, in several scenes in the movie we saw the tie fighter and they didn't really have this but uh, including a holster for a blaster makes sense you can remove this you just take this detach this and this whole section can slide off so if you don't want that on there you want a little bit more of a uh, film accurate representation you can do that as well so getting that latched back on there uh, this keep this off to his side come on it's a little strap there we go uh, you can see you got this nice little magnet right here that brings the uh, little strap closed uh, locks it all in place and everything it's kind of <laughs> difficult to do uh, this fits perfectly in here uh, you just slide this down all the way make sure that you push that all the way down and then this comes over locks on right there so that works very nicely 
this can fit in here. Um, I, I don't know if they originally intended it to, intended it to do that, but it doesn't fit as cleanly. As you can see, you got this section right here that doesn't really fit all the way down. Now, I mean, in doing that, you, you can have it on there, but I don't believe that this holster was intended for this gun. I think it's more the design for this, but it still is functional and you can still use it with this, so it's a matter of personal preference. But like I said, if you don't like that gun holster on there, you can take it off. I mean, these guys were just flying around in their TIE fighter, so they really didn't need the blasters or rifles or anything like, like that. So uh, getting him set back there. And then he does come with a very simple all black display stand. Now you come around to the bottom and it does say Star Wars in this nice silver text. But as for the top, very simple, very plain, and it actually works. I, I think that's a great way of uh, giving them a display stand. And then you have this section right here that just locks in. You have the adjustable cradle, which allows you to just go plop like so and then stabilize them if you need to uh, but that's it those are all his accessories uh and like i said it, it's kind of one of those things where i don't mind it all that much because what else are you going to really give this guy but the figure himself is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, again, very cool looking jumpsuit, but it's very simple and really does have a 70s feel to it, especially when you look at these buttons. It, it's funny that we thought in the future that they would just be these very big, bulky, kind of clicky buttons, and now everything's touchscreen. So it's kind of it's kind of funny looking back and seeing how they designed that stuff. You can see a real nice uh, instrument panel right here on his left arm. You have the uh, Imperial logo right here. You also have it on the top. Now, one thing that uh, does kind of throw me off in terms of the, the overall uh, look, I, I, I suppose, for this guy, in every shot that I remember and went back and checked, uh, on the actual helmet right up here, there was some kind of writing. Uh, now this doesn't have it, so I'm really not 100% sure why they uh, omitted that. It kind of bums me out because I would have preferred to see that because that's a little bit more screen accurate. But the helmet itself, I mean, you can see really simply incredible the sculpting on there is great you can see that it is the original trilogy it doesn't have the uh, episode 7 look or anything like that you got some nice silver here but all in a very clean very gorgeous looking piece uh, you got these nice uh, rubbery hoses that come down and then plug in here. Uh, that doesn't detach or anything. I'm not going to pull it. Uh, this whole section here, you can see lifting this up is kind of loose from the body. There's a strap section right here that straps onto the actual back section. Uh, but it doesn't actually lock this down. But this stays nice and flush with the rest of the body. So that works, I, I think, very nicely. I, I do like how in some shots I remember this back section being a lot more bulky. But specifically in the scene where... Uh, Vader takes two of these in uh, A New Hope to uh, defend the Death Star. These guys are walking away, and you can actually see that this is a much smaller piece, so I like seeing that uh, represented here on the figure. But all in all, I mean, like I said, very simple. You got this almost, I, I don't want to say boring, because it is still really very cool, but kind of plain pilot jumpsuit on here, which I think works good. You got these nice, simple boots, great texture here on the bottom. Uh, again, you got these gloves with some really nice uh, wear, and you can even see that there is some variation in the paint itself, which really does look very, very good. I love the detail that they put in the, the breathing thing here. I mean, you got the little gray pieces here on the side. Like I said, very simple, but that's how it looked in the movie, and that simplicity is just recreated perfectly on this. Uh, now for his articulation, uh, because this is a softer uh, material, you can get a full range of motion really with this. You can feel that there's two joints and you can even see underneath there like uh, this little silver dot right on the inside. Kind of like it's his rank insignia or something like that. It doesn't have one on the other side, but um, now does this, I'm, I'm, I'm curious if this detaches. I'm not going to, yeah, it doesn't seem like it comes off too easily, but I'm going to leave it on there. Uh, but you can see you get a nice range of motion with that whole piece. Um, I'm just being, I'm just being nosy. I might as well, right? Uh, that doesn't, again, I, this doesn't feel like it detaches, uh, so I'm not going to force it or anything like that. Uh, but looking underneath there, you can see that there is some simple detail on the, the jumpsuit as well. Uh, so you do have that full range of motion in the head itself. The shoulders move forward and back they uh, do have 
the a little bit of an armpit joint here at the shoulder so you get a little bit of pivot in there not a heck of a lot but there does feel like there's some movement in it uh, it does rotate you can obviously move it forward you can let's see there we go rotate that back nice ratchet joints it feels like that's it's in there it's very soft ratchet joints but you can feel it moving very nicely uh, he does have double jointed elbows which is nice uh, he rotates at the upper part of the bicep the wrists do rotate they don't really move forward and back because like I showed you the uh, the peg is right about here so you're not going to get a lot of movement with that so it's a little unfortunate but it's just the way that the sculpting is uh, he does have an upper ab crunch right below right about there he does have a hip joint that allows a nice range of motion the upper part of the legs move forward they move back but they don't move all the way back he's got his butt right there so it stops right there they move in and out they rotate at the upper part of the thigh they have one joint or is it two no it's that two joint system that uh, we've saw uh, previously with like Deadpool so you do have that kind of squeaky joint in there so you've got two joints there and then the ankles do rotate and then I would imagine move forward and back but this is all one sculpt so you don't get a lot of pivot in the actual foot I know that's going to bother that Shardimus Prime because there's no ankle tilt but I, I do kind of like this look because it doesn't break it up but I think they could have done it where you do get some ankle movement uh, as it is it kind of locks the figure in, in a position and you're kind of fiddling with them to get them to stand straight now, because it does utilize that body that we saw on a deadpool one thing that i don't i don't like i mean this is a very soft uh, ratchet joint moving outward this one is a lot more stiff uh, and so you can see one joint two joint and then I'm guessing maybe there's a third one, but the pants kind of restrict it. But because of that, I mean, th that's a really big extreme motion. Uh, I would have preferred just a regular friction joint in there to get a little bit more of a fluid kind of motion. Uh, you can see that you can spread the legs pretty decently and it doesn't look all that awkward. But I, I would have preferred, uh, you know, those the friction joints just to make things a little bit more, like I said, fluid in the hip area. Um, but I, all in all, though, I mean, this guy really is really cool looking. Uh, if you are a Star Wars fan and a collector of, you know, the Imperial you know, militaristic looking figures from Star Wars, this is one that I think a lot of fans are going to be very happy with. Also, one other thing that does kind of bother me is that he has his holster on his left side, but all they give you are right trigger hands. You don't get a left trigger hand. I can't imagine him reaching over to grab his gun to hold it in this hand. That just doesn't make sense. So I really would have preferred it if they kind of swap this, give him a, a left trigger finger and then a right hand to kind of support it. As, as it is right now, it's reversed. And like I said, I think that this should be left-sided and this should be right-sided just because of where you have that. And you can't really just slide this around to the other side because the way that the holster is designed, it's designed to have the gun in this configuration. So uh, that's something that I think that they could have done differently as well. Now, that and the lack of the symbols on the mask are really probably the only gripes that I have with this figure. Is that enough for me to be turned off by the figure? Absolutely not. There's just something really striking about kind of an all black the stormtrooper and I'm not the only one who thinks that. I mean the simple nature and simple color that stormtroopers bring whether or not they're you know actual stormtroopers on the ground or you know tie fighters the simple elegance of what their suits look like really is very striking to look at. Now, like I said, this guy doesn't really come with a lot, but I wouldn't necessarily expect him to come with a lot. And that being said, I really do think that the $199 price point for this is actually pretty good. I'm very content with that price. And I think for collectors of the Star Wars military kind of looking figures, they're going to want several of these guys. I mean, at least two to kind of recreate that scene where Vader takes them, as I talked previously, to defend the Death Star. So I do think that that price really is pretty good, especially if you do want to get multiples of these. So if this is a figure that you're interested in getting, he is available at Sideshow Collectibles. So all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to Sideshow where you can pick this guy up and add him to your collection today. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomus, and until next time, I'll talk to you later.